welcome to this new episode of Continuum Gaming and today we have another Safety Share S topic which is a little bit of a special one because we have the update 4.5 which came out last week and I didn't update till now so we can really do the process together. Um, it's going to be the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III which we are going to update in this case and uh, it's the same smartphone as this one. And um, yeah, in the end, what we are going to do here is I'm going to go through you with all the different steps we have to do to do the update. I know of a little bit of hiccups that may or may not occur on our device, we will see. And um, so I'm going to talk about something like that too. And of course, because this is an update of the smartphone itself, we cannot always show you the display on the big screen at least. I'm going to show it uh, on the small screen, of course, what is going on. But uh, yeah, in the nature of things, I think it's uh, pretty understandable that we are going to have to update to a new, let's say, major version. It's not the 5 update or something, so that would be probably the major version, but the sub-major version, whatever. Um, it's a pretty big update, so there are, I think, about 700 bug fixes and a couple of different things which are pretty deep integrated into the system, which are updated. So everything is going to shut down for a while too. And um, yeah, of course, it's not a bigger problem because we can populate the, the screen here with a couple of different informations we can see about the update and stuff like that. So we are going to talk about that while I'm updating the system. And um, so you will have a couple of different informations, uh, yeah, hopefully, which are pretty interesting for you. Um, whether you're new to Selfish OS or you want to do the update yourself, we will see what uh, you will see there. And if there is something new for you that gives you a nice little overview or whatever, what's going to uh, be here happening. Um, I already know that most of the Selfish OS updates require a hard reset after a little while, so we will see if it's the same with this update, but I already heard that there are a couple of people that had to do that, so we will see if it's the same for me, but that's not really a big issue or something, you just have to give the smartphone enough time to do it, and then you can, in general, do the hard reset and everything should be fine. Okay, um, yeah, just to mention what I'm going to use for this episode, I'm going to use, of course, the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III here. I'm going to use my laptop, which is this one, that is going to give us some screen output for this part. And there will be this um, digital notebook. I'm not going to tell you which kind of, uh, of manufacturer did this because um, yeah, I'm not doing any kind of advertisement or something for this ad uh, for this part, but uh, just that you know what this is. It's just some kind of a digital block, which I'm going, or a digital notebook more or less, which I'm going to use to write on and, and do stuff, because I already have a, little, uh, a couple of different informations on this, which we are going to talk about in this episode, which is new for Selfish OS and stuff. Okay, so first off, um, yeah, at, uh, or as always when I'm going to put on something on the big screen for my Selfish OS device here, um, I'm going to use Screencast for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the new this app. So there's Firefox in this case. I'm going to put it into full screen mode so we have the full screen uh, yeah, possibilities here, or the, the full screen covered with our, our output from Selfish OS. And as you can see, if I'm doing something, you're going to see it on the smartphone and on the big screen. So there may be a little bit of a delay. The delay is probably caused by a screencast because the smartphone itself is pretty snappy. There's not much to, to um, say about that. But in the end, the screencast technology is just a little bit, yeah, laggy. It's fine to show everything and stuff like that, but you will see micro starters and stuff like that pretty often with it. Um, yeah, so I would say let's start with the first part. For that I'm going to go to my side here. Hopefully I'm going to find a good position, something like this, so you can see my smartphone at the same time, a little bit like this, um, my smartphone at the same time as uh, the big screen, so you should be able to see everything that uh, is going on here. And of course, one sec. 
there was my cursor of my laptop which was still in the screen that shouldn't happen over there neither okay so um, first off what I want to show you is that there is a new update if you go to the notifications you can always see it it's the first one there Selfish OS has given an update for your telephone, which just means there is an update available for your smartphone in this case. And it's called Struven Ketchu 4.5.0.16. And this is more or less the part which we are going to do there. There are a couple of other uh, notifications there, but we don't have to mind them. And um, yeah, let's, we can of course get rid of them later on at least. So probably there's nothing which we really need here. So I'm going to just dismiss all of them. And after that, what we can do here is I'm going to go to my settings here. So this one, and there we should be able to see the new update already available. Go a little bit down, there is it. There it is actualization for Selfish OS, which means it's just updates for Selfish OS in English. If you go to that, you will see that there is a new update for the telephone now. So he's going to talk about that. And we get a couple of different informations about all this. Um, if you want to update it, you have to use the uh, upper list feature. So the menu, which is going to be, the, I, I don't know, drop down menu or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that you can reach if you are dropping it down. It's something that is selfish as unique I think at least um, so that's something you will have there um, most importantly if you are updating something make sure that uh, of course if I'm going to go to the part there uh, make sure that you have a pretty large battery um, capacity there so as you can see or better to say the, the uh, loading of the, uh, the battery should be pretty full and uh, we have 84% uh, at the moment. I'm going to put it into uh, being connected to my my um, my loading uh, USB adapter there. So we are not running into any kind of trouble because of energy loss or something, which would be pretty hard to, to get by. So make sure that if you are updating something, just plug it in. It's, it's just easier to do like that. Okay, so that should be fine for now. As you can see, we've got a new one. It's about one gigabyte of, uh, up, uh, up, uh, of data. So it's a pretty big, a big update. You need a lot of uh, stuff. And if you have a look at that, there are a couple of different informations about what is going to be updated. We are going to talk about that a little bit more later on. So let's start with this part. And all you have to do now is just go to download Herunterladen means download in German, and if I do that, he's going to start to download everything. So it's not yet updating or something because it's not downloaded automatically or whatever. Um, yeah, Selfish OS gives, uh, gives you the option to do the update whenever you want or just dismiss the update, for instance, if you don't want to update. That's all up to you. Of course, I want to do that because what you can already see here is the biggest update probably or the biggest thing that is going to be updated for the smartphone is the Android app support. So we are going to switch to version 11 from version 10 which was the one for 4.4 and uh, yeah in the end we are going to get all the possibilities of Android phones which have Android 11 on them and um, yeah, there are a couple of different other things that are going to be updated. One of the more interesting things, so I would say we are just going to let this download everything and uh, I'm going to get back to the smartphone if that is done. So I'm just going to put it somewhere here so you can even see that what's going on there probably. And yeah, should be fine. And now what we are going to do here we are going to go to the community news about all this um, because Selfish OS, as mentioned before, is updated pretty heavily now. 
And what we are going to see here is, of course, what is going to be changed. There are a couple of different things which are interesting. For instance, you can now receive Selfish OS X, which is Selfish OS in the end, so the Android app support and stuff like that. <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, as a limited time offer, so you may want to start, if you didn't have it till now, for 40 uh, euros in the end, instead of 50 euros. So as you already know, probably, Selfish OS costs 50 euros if you want the Android app support. There is a free version available without that, but the stuff that needs Android app support, so Android apps in the end, and um, I think it's something like uh, Outlook integration or Exchange integration more or less. Um, if you need those kind of stuff, then you would have to pay for that a little bit of money. And um, yeah, just to let you know, there is an information that we need to, uh, to uh, get rid of one of the packages of, uh, on our smartphone. Um, I already know about that. There are often these kind of informations uh, on, the, on the update screen because we just installed uh, something that is no longer compatible to the new version or something like that, so we would have to update it later on in general. But um, what I'm not, I'm not going to do that at the moment, just because, um, yeah, in the end, most updates till now were like that wasn't much of a thing. So you just had or could work with it and you didn't have to deinstall the Sham GUI in this case. Um, we will see. Maybe, maybe I'm going to deinstall it now. and I already know that Sham GUI is something that is going to be mentioned on the screen here. And um, probably I... Yeah, why not? Why not just get rid of it for now and just get it back later on? So, just to make sure that everything is happening here as it should, I'm going to switch back so this one, so I can see, I can show it to you better. Sometimes I will have to refresh if I have gone to another page. <coughs> yeah, there we go. And yeah, again, as you can see here, he is going to ask us to get rid of the package uh, Selfish OS Sham GUI, which is more or less one of the stores of Selfish OS. And um, what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to do that now. Um, it's on the, in my store folder here and there you can see Sham is the one he's mentioning there. And all I have to do now, as you can see, is just click on that. Sham is going to be uninstalled and after a while it should be gone then. So let's see. There we go. It's uninstalled. so. Probably it's going to be better for him now. I'm not really sure if you do, uh, do have to do it. As mentioned before, some people are, are uninstalling it from time to time if they are going to update something. Some are not. Um, it really depends on you and in general it's not a bigger deal for such a thing. Sometimes there are other things that might be uh, interesting. So in some situations you want to do it, in others you really don't need to. Oops, go back, there we are. Okay, so, um, and as mentioned before, Selfish OS Sham GUI can be reinstalled, but there has to be a new version that is working then with uh, version 4.5, but it's already available, so you can just download it after you install the update. Okay, so let's put it back here. And what I'm going to show you here as mentioned before, there is a sales going on with, with Selfish X at the moment. You don't need Selfish X to run Selfish OS if you don't want to, or if you just are happy with native uh, software on your smartphone, then everything is fine. If you need Android support, you can get it now. It's a one-time pay, so you don't have to do it each and every uh, version or something. So I'm not going to go there and buy that now, because I already got the pay there. So, um, yeah, more interestingly, there, there are a couple of different news available for the Selfish OS community news. If you don't know about that, it's a pretty nice website. 
or the forum more or less where they are giving you a couple of different things from uh, all over the, the uh, Selfish OS um, yeah, community more or less. It's not only Java or something, but everything, okay? And um, of course only the, the known ones and more important ones, not everything, but in the end those parts. And there was a big, big um, uh, yeah, trade fair more or less in Brussels where uh, Yola got a couple of different informations and, and of course a small little um, booth there where they uh, show, have shown a couple of different things like the smartphones, like on different devices as you can see. So there are a couple of different uh, devices with Selfish OS on the screen here. And uh, of course there was a laptop which is going to show a little bit about the app support and the stuff that is going on and stuff like that. But more importantly, let's have a look at the other stuff here. So as mentioned before, Android uh, version 11 is now supported with it. And um, there are a couple of different other things which are going to be updated. Um, if I'm saying a couple, I'm, I'm talking about pretty much everything on the sm uh, smartphone, if you ask me. No, not really, but a lot of different things. Um, because we've got 700 bug fixes in this release, as mentioned in one of the blog uh, um, posts they posted from Yola itself. And um, yeah. The second very interesting thing for me, because I had a problem that my um, car wouldn't recognize Selfish OS reliably um, as an audio source. So I couldn't, uh, for instance, uh, connect it to my, uh, my Bluetooth uh, connector in my car and get, for instance, an audio plate or something like that. And um, yeah, something mentioned in the updates is updated Bluetooth scanning and audio control. So maybe this might be an interesting thing. It's not about only the Android side, which was updated too, but it's also um, mentioned to be about the Selfish OS side. So maybe it's working now, I'm not sure, but I will test that out later on then. Um, then we've got a calendar view. So there are a couple of different informations about the native um, calendar app on, smart, on Selfish OS, which was updated. Um, very interesting thing too, because you can, for instance, have different kind of views now. I think that wasn't implemented before. So for instance, you've got uh, not only the day and month view, I think was the one that were already available, but a couple of different other uh, ones too. And um, yeah, another pretty interesting thing is of course the uh, alphanumeric um, uh, lock screen password now, so it's no longer a pin if you don't want that to be a pin, but you can do it in alpha numeric one, meaning that you can, for instance, put in a word or whatever. Um, so really, just letters instead of just figures. Okay, um, maybe a little bit interesting too. But uh, there are a couple of different news around other stuff because, for instance, if you didn't know before, the camera of the uh, Selfish OS uh, operation system can, or well, the camera app of the Selfish OS op operation system can't at the moment access all four cameras of this, uh, the Xperia 10 Mark III, but only two of them. So the front view uh, one and the rear view one, but only the rear view main one and not the other uh, parts. If I show you that, you can already see it, the smartphone, as many smartphones today, has uh, different lenses here and only the main lens was accessible. Um, that is not going to change directly with this release, but there is a little bit of information about that, as you can see here, that they are working on that and it might be solved in the future. So um, that is a big thing because for now, or till now, I didn't really hear much about that. Um, from the site there, they, they told us, hey, we might need help with this and um, the developer community might help probably more or less soon or la later and this seems to be one of the thoughts that is going on there and I'm really happy if that could be um, taken into account um, because where is my other smartphone in one sec the, that was a pretty or the, the only downgrade let's say from my Sony Xperia 10 Mark II which you can see here um, it has 
more or less the same layout. It's a little bit slower and stuff like that, but in the end, it's a very equal smartphone. And um, that one has already three lenses at the back here too. And um, yeah, in this case, those were accessible, but uh, because Sony changed something, I'm not sure exactly technically what it was, but Sony changed something and because of that, um, it wasn't possible to do this in the same way at least on the Selfisher S10 Mark III, but that is going to be addressed probably sooner or later, as you can see here. Okay, um, and there are a couple of different other things that are going to be shown here. For instance, there's a new um, yeah, telephone stack updates and stuff like that. So there are a couple of different problems with that which have been fixed. Um, it's not really, as I understand it, about uh, echoing stuff. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I think that would be the second most important thing to be handled, if you ask me. But you know, that's not really the case. Um, I think it has been improved, so there are a couple of different improvements around that, for instance for smaller bugs that are there, but um, yeah, there is an echo problem in some situations, not all of the time and not all of the people are going to hear it and stuff like that, but in some situations you can hear there is an echo going on in, uh, if you are using your smartphone in a, in a yeah, only in a combination with other stuff. It's, it's a little bit hard to tell um, because I'm not experiencing it every time or whatever. And um, it really depends on the other side and on, on the smartphone itself, in which condition is it and stuff like that. It's a little bit hard to tell. Yeah, but uh, as you can see, there are a couple of different things, especially for developers. There's a lot of different things going on under the hood. So that is an interesting thing because in the end all of this if there are updates to that um, will help us sooner or later and um, give us more information and as you can see we've got a couple of different updates here too and stuff like that and this is very interesting and um, my smartphone is just telling me I'm not sure how long you you could see it easier than me um, but my smartphone is just telling me as you can see the update is now more or less transferred, so we can now start to update. So let's turn around, just to let you see everything on the screen. As mentioned before, it might be that you are not going to see everything on the big screen there after a while at least, but for now, as you can see, the update is now ready to be installed. And there's, of course, an information. Uh, the, the update will take a while. Um, in this time, you cannot use your, your device. Um, and that includes, for instance, any kind of calls you want to do or to get calls and stuff like that. Um, and even something like emergency calls and stuff like that will not be possible. So they're just telling you everything will be shut down on us. Okay. And, uh, then there is this information, the device will restart after it has been installed, more or less. And um, yeah, as mentioned before, that might happen, it might not happen, we will see. But there's a very easy fix for that. And then I'm just going to go to the update screen or the menu there, and I'm going to click on install. And now I really got it. Okay, and as you can see, he is asking me to wait a little. And as mentioned before, now we have a desynchronized screen there with this screen. As you can see, he is going to give us some kind of an information with a red light, which is interesting, but whatever. And for this, I'm just going to put this smartphone. There we go. Red light is gone. So he dropped down more or less. And this is normal for Selfish OS, so if you are restarting your smartphone, he's going to tell you that. And there's, of course, a screen from Sony and a screen from Selfish OS. And probably now he's going to work itself through. Okay, first we have to put in our security code. I'm going to do that now. Okay, it was inputted, and we get this screen. 
which is giving us information about how far the update process has went to now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this uh, to a power enabled state. So it really has the power adapter uh, put to it. Um, as mentioned before, it's very wise to update to um, really charge your smartphone before you're doing this. So just don't rely on that this um, part is going to yeah, more or less charge when the update is done, uh, done because in the end this is really a very basic thing which is going to be before everything else is going on. So it's about a BIOS thing more or less and um, like that you should really make sure that your smartphone is more or less charged to the full potential or at least yeah, let's say something above 60% uh, or something should be fine and then just wait a little till the update screen is done. I'm going to put this aside for now for that time. So here's my power adapter. I'm just going to plug it in just in case. As mentioned before, it, it's not even sure, or I'm not even sure that it's going to work like that, but we will see. Hopefully this will hold, I think so. And you can already see what's going on there on, the, on my smartphone. And uh, probably I'm going to give it, when I'm talking about stuff like this, uh, a little bit too much time and, to, uh, and you will see it's already done, but we will see. Okay, so in the end there are a couple of different things which are going to be updated as you can see. For instance, um, or not going to be, or yeah, going to be in the end because my smartphone is at the moment updating. But um, there are a couple of different libraries which have been updated, a lot of them. And there are a couple of different things which has been, have been changed about the policy, which is a very interesting thing, uh, the policy about the Yola store. So the Yola store didn't allow all the different libraries and stuff like that uh, that could be used by the, uh, by the developers in the Yola store itself. And um, for that we've got a couple of different uh, different stores, um, like for instance Shop we installed it uh, before, Open Wrappers, and of course the Selfish OS Yolo store for instance, and there are a couple of uh, them more, the Android side of course, but those three are the ones which uh, are more or less yeah, giving you the native supported apps. And, um, Yola didn't allow a lot of different uh, different things to go in there because of that open web process was very prominent. And um, it might be that in the future there are more apps allowed in the Yola uh, store itself, which is of course, yeah, the, I would say the most reliable source of, of, uh, of apps that you can get. So um, if you're downloading something from the Yolo store, it's pretty uncommon that it's it's harmful to your device or whatever. And um, just to mention it, um, it's not like Open Repros or anything else, the Sham uh, Sham stuff or whatever, is harmful to your device or something, or is going to uh, to really hurt it in any kind of way. In general, it's working very very great. I didn't have any experiences with a bad um, app till now from one of those stores, there's nothing there, um, especially in case of any kind that is really severe for you and um, in general it should all be fine if you are installing from there. But as mentioned before, there is some kind of a hierarchy more or less, so we ha you have the uh, Yola store which is the most reliable one, then you have the Open Web Cross and the Shum store which are more or less at the same, uh, same um, yeah, great, I would say, and then everything else. So the, the, then there is going to be for Android app support users, so AD users, um, you are going to get uh, the, um, the hmm, just lost, I lost the name of it. It's a Droid uh, store thing. So the open, open source community has created uh, Android apps, which are in general, without Google uh, services and stuff like that, it depends on the, on the part, but it's at least telling you when something is going on there. And then you are going to go down the ladder because then there is, for instance, uh, yeah, it, it depends what you what you think about it. Um, there is, of course, uh, the Google App Store, which is um, 
by the Aurora store accessed. So in the end, it's not going to be your credentials which are going to transmit it to Google or something, but they are transmitting information to Google and um, supporting the Google Apps uh, ecosystem and stuff like that, which is something I'm not too keen of, but sometimes you just need that. And um, in that situation, you can use the Aurora store, for instance, and um, then there are a couple of other Android stores, which are, for instance, uh, I haven't used it for a while, I have to say. Um, APK Pure, for instance, is one, and um, there's another one I'm not sure at the moment. Uh, I will just put information about those stores in the description box below if you want to know more about that. Um, I have written a whole little article on my website about all of this. And um, yeah, in the end, um, those are the, the different stores, but if you can get more from the most reliable one, that's pretty great. Okay, um, as you can see already here, my smartphone is at the moment restarting. So it seems to be working. Many people told me before that that wouldn't, but we will see. Maybe, maybe it will just go through another root cycle, I'm not sure. Um, I had, in, had, for instance, another one. I'm just going to cut that off now. Go to your view here so you can easily, easier see it. Um, so it's starting at the moment. It seems like it's going to work as it's meant to be. So probably no hard reset needed, we will see that. Um, and there are a couple of different things which we have to accept. Yeah, it's already the new one. As you can see, there's a new little icon there, which is telling us, okay, um, you can now use alphanumeric parts. So not only the, the normal um, figures here, so the, the numbers more or less, but you can use the whole keyboard if you want to. So we have Safish OS 4.5 on our smartphone already because this is a new feature. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to put in my code here. And now we are just going to have to wait a little. I'm not sure if the update is already done. Oh, probably it is, probably it is. So this is normal. I have a couple of different things, so it's, it's more or less a security code, uh, code at the start, and we have a security code which is going to be asked again after that. Those are both uh, security codes which are from Safe OS itself, and after that we are going to have security codes to input uh, from, the, uh, from the SIM cards. It's a dual SIM, and I'm using it as a dual SIM, so in the end we are going to see that, there we go, as you can see, SIM 1 pin has to be included and stuff like that. This is just normal because we are using a dual SIM system and if you are shutting the smartphone off, really off to, to the, the low power mode, so no power is, or at least close to no power is consumed there, um, you are going to have to do this. And the pin codes are one, one part less. So that should be the first, and as you can see, we have SIM2 now, which is the other one, and I'm going to put that one in too. And there we go. Even this patch manager, I, I don't use patch, uh, patches at, this, at the moment, uh, but I could have, and then they should work at the moment. And um, not all of them are compatible with the 4.5 version, of course, but seems like most of them, which are more important, are. And as you can already can see, we've got everything done. We have 83% of the battery left, and um, that's pretty nice. And we got it done without a restart even. So pretty interesting that it worked out, and it's a pretty nice one how it is looking and seems to be working pretty nicely. Okay, um, so a couple of different things which we are going to see on the big screen now. Give me one sec. Hopefully I have to just get in here. It's not going to work from the start probably, we will see. Just going, ah, yeah, okay. It's already doing what it should. Pretty nice that even that was covered there. So as you can see, 
you are now seeing everything that I'm going to do on my smartphone again on the big screen. And yeah, a couple of different things which I expected to happen. I'm not sure if we are going to see it, but which I expected to happen. Yeah, you can already see it. All the different uh, apps from the Android part, so every Android apps is going to be dropped out of all the different uh, folders. As you can see, we have popular Android apps and there's nothing in there at the moment because all of my apps from Android were in there, or at least the ones I tested in the last episode, as you can see. And those are going to be put down below now um, because we just updated two things. For instance, we have new icons, as you can see. So all the different apps are now looking like they would in, uh, if they would be native, uh, natively uh, under Selfish OS. As you can see, they have these kind of bubbly features. So in the end, some kind of this bubble, so speech bubbles or something in, in comics, for instance, would look like that. Or you can, of course, have a couple of different other ones. But in the end, as you can see, all of them are here. I'm not using most of them, uh, if I have to be uh, uh, honest with you. But uh, they were on there because I had this update or the last video so um, if you want to uh, watch that have a look up there i'm going to put it in the bubble there and um, there you should be able to see the the different apps i tested there and because of that those are still on my smartphone here and um, yeah other than that of course there should now be a couple of different informations more firefox focus for instance and stuff like that and there's Android. I just lost the name for that, but there's Android, and um, which is the Android store I talked before about before. And um, yeah, now let's have a look at the settings here. So settings pretty pretty normal at the moment, of course. And as you can see, we have all the different things I'm already aware of probably. I can go to the Android app support, and as you can see, we have now Android 11. Uh, which is going to be there with API level 30 and it's going to be started with a, with a device start at the moment and yeah seems to be pretty nice and pretty cool to work with okay um, other than that there are a couple of different things which are going to be new and stuff like that but I'm not going to cover all of them in this update or in this video uh, because yeah, I simply don't know everything about it because we just did the update. So um, I hope that this gave you a little bit of an overview how the update process is going to be, um, what might happen, what might not happen and stuff like that. And hopefully you had a great time with me here. Um, thank you for watching. It was pretty flawless if you ask me. So I will have now to reinstall the Sham um, store, but other than that, everything should be pretty nicely done. And um, other than that, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you had fun with this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That's going to help everybody more or less. And um, yeah, if you have any kind of comments, questions, whatever, put them down below into the commentary section. Maybe we can find it together a solution or yeah, just ask about stuff. And um, other than that, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like more news about Selfish OS or for instance Windows 10 Mobile. It's going to be an alternating um, yeah, alternating process more or less, so each second episode is about Selfish OS and the other one might be about Windows 10 Mobile as long as I can keep that up. And other than that, thank you for watching, see you in the next episode and bye! Bye!